What's up everyone? Uh, today I'm out here with my 2017 Transit 250 uh, camper slash moto van and I want to show you guys around the outside, the inside, uh, show you how I load bikes and pretty much just how I have it set up to best accommodate uh, my adventures, my, my motorcycle riding and camping. So I think you'll really like it. I've spent a lot of time putting into a uh, design and the build. Uh, it started out as a cargo van and I built the whole thing myself inside and out. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So the van itself is, like I said, a 2017 Transit 250. It is the long wheelbase, medium roof. It has a 3.31 axle ratio and the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. So that's a, a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. And I absolutely love the engine. It's been uh, incredible so far. I've got extended tow mirrors on it. Those have really come in handy, uh, just being able to see since there aren't any side windows or anything. And you'll notice later I have the rear windows covered up. As for the exterior, it's pretty basic. I wanted to keep it kind of a uh, covert. So if I'm camping, you know, somewhere, rest area or anything, it's doesn't really give away that, you know, I have bikes or I'm sleeping inside or anything. So we'll come around to the rear and to start, we have this uh, this box here. So I built this whole hitch rack myself and the box. Uh, this is my gas can carrier. So it can swing out like this. And then this lid of course opens up and I've got two gas cans in there. Little lock right there, which is kind of handy. That allows access to both back doors. But uh, let's open up the side door. All right, so here we go to the inside. Uh, back here, as you can see, uh, it's pretty well set up. I got everything carpeted. All the ceiling and walls, there's an inch of foam insulation. It's just pink styrofoam from Lowe's or Home Depot. And then it has the uh, Mylar, I believe it's called, bubble wrap. It's like aluminum foil bubble wrap, pretty much. Uh, I can't, oh, you can see a little bit of it sticking out there. Originally, how I wanted it was basically the back area was gonna be bikes, and then up front will be my bed. I like the idea of a fixed bed so you can pull over and literally just climb right into it and go to sleep. So uh, it's kind of a goofy shape and it looks small. I'm six feet tall, but it's actually seven feet from that corner all the way to that corner. So you lay across here and it's really, really cozy. I always have this comforter in here. I don't have the pillows in it at the moment. I'll show you this feature. So we've got this light here and then we got this remote to control it. So I usually have it on this blue setting which is just kind of nice. I installed other lights back here, helmet shelf, and then all under the cabinets here. It probably looks cooler with the main stock cargo lights off. Yeah, so it gives it a really nice, like warm, just comfortable feel to it. To start out, I guess, in terms of like privacy, I've got this here, which is just a shower rod with this uh, shower curtain. And it hooks up just like that. They all have this up like that, but you have total privacy right now. A bunch of these snapped off, so it actually doesn't <laughs> doesn't work very well. But uh, that gives you some good privacy if you want to kind of covert camp. Here we have a drop down screen for this door, so if you open that up, you can keep bugs out and let some air in. Working toward the back, we got our helmet shelf. We've got all these shelves. Again, everything in here I made myself. So these these took a lot of time to carpet. Some of it's peeling up here. I need to re-glue that, but otherwise, super sturdy. Um, I do have a van build series on my YouTube channel. I'll put links in the description if you wanna see how all this was made. So this is one of the newest features, and in my opinion, probably one of the coolest. This turns into another bed. We lift that up, and then we just quickly slide out this mattress. And then we have a twin size bed. Uh, it needs to like cool down a little bit. It's kind of banana shaped right now, but yeah, that's awesome. So I just have these uh, hinged two by four legs here, which drop down when you lift it up. And then there is a third leg that you have to manually put down there. And then it's really sturdy. So that's been really comfortable. Um, the other cool thing is and it's more handy when it's in bench mode, but uh, fold that up. And then I have these storage compartments here. So I keep tools, tripods, uh, extra bike parts, bike gear, pretty much whatever goes in there. 
So we've got one on that side, and then we've got another one on this side as well. See my body armor there, and that's like air filters, other camping supplies. And then when this thing's all folded back up, when it's cold, the mattress kind of hardens, stiffens up, but right now it's, it's quite warm. So snap that leg up, grab these two legs, drop it down, and we're back in bench mode. So you saw the bed underneath. I've got a safe under here, all encased in steel, so that's pretty secure. Um, I've got this latch here, this pulls out, and there is a uh, fridge in here. So you're probably wondering how this is all powered. And really the fridge is the only thing that runs continuously. I have a little 300 watt inverter up there, which I really rarely use. I use something else I'll show you later in the video. All more storage under the bed there. Got my bike stand, my bag. So pretty much right now, this is all set up. I can live out of it, go camping, whatever. Uh, here, it's empty right now, but I've got a five or six gallon. Yeah, six gallon uh, spare water jug there. Can use it for washing dishes, whatever. Let's go up front now and some more cool uh, camping features. Uh, my aunt helped me uh, make these drop downs here. So we unvelcro in these three spots and then we have a secondary window shade. So if I'm like more permanently setting up for camp for a couple days, I'll drop that down and then it's just kind of opens up this so I don't have to have the, uh, the uh, shower curtain pulled over there. Another thing, and I keep these up here, these are my secondary window covers, so super, super simple. There's a magnet stitched into these. So all you do is hang it up, go like that. And then the cool thing is it just has this zip down here. So that folds down and then there's mosquito netting there. So when you close the door and you have the window open, you can let fresh air in while you're camping, but you won't have a problem with bugs coming in. So you gotta kind of hold it like that. But uh, once it's in place, got a uh, screened off window that you can open and obviously the same for both side with this other one I won't bother uh, setting that up though so from the outside it blocks pretty much all the light they're pretty dark tinted windows and then um, as well as having the black material there so you can have quite a bit of light inside the van and no one's gonna be able to see inside what you're doing to put it down literally just zip it up rip it off and then roll it back up and you're good. So we can put these back up here. It's not the greatest place to store them, but it works. Also, while we're talking window covers in the back here, we've got these which are uh, just Velcroed on, but they're insulated a little bit. Uh, I never have a use for my rear windows really in terms of uh, driving. And every time I camp, I don't want people looking in. so. Uh, not to mention the bikes are in here, so no one can peek in with a flashlight when everything's locked up and that's closed No one can see in there's <laughs> literally no chance no matter how hard you try So uh, so these are velcroed you can roll these up and attach them up there if you do want the window open I'm not gonna do it because the uh, velcro. I, I just don't want to wear out too much But uh, that was really nice. That's been a new feature lately um, There's a lot of convenience items in here like this paper towel holder I use that mainly for the bikes or uh, when I'm cooking food back here. It's just nice, you can reach in from outside and grab it. Uh, I always keep a roll of paper towel up there or over there, I've got two right now. We got wet wipes, always have snacks ready there. One of the features I really love about this is the gear nets. I can put all my riding gear in here, things can be sweaty, it's in nets, so it's not like it's locked up in a bin where it's gonna get no airflow. But you put sweaty gear in here and you know within a day or overnight or something, it's pretty well aired out. Uh, other random things up here, we've got a tarp. Over here is a lot of like the uh, kind of, I guess more camping stuff like cookware. I usually put food in this bin and this bin here. It's got some random stuff. We got exam gloves in case you gotta work on the bike. Always have plastic bags with you, grocery bags. Those just make life so easy in a lot of situations. Of course, toilet paper. We got a bunch of tape, Velcro, some funnels, a knife, just a bunch of random tools in that bin. Up here, I've got a uh, kitchen set, bowls, all that stuff. I actually just got that, so I haven't even opened it yet. Uh, we got some cutting boards back there. Here, I keep kind of some random bike parts, chain lube that I access almost every time I ride, spare tubes, uh, first aid kit. Oh, that's just really handy there. So before I load the bikes, I wanna show you this really, really awesome feature here. 
open these doors back up again. Well, we will grab this hose here. I'm trying to hold the camera and do two-handed things. So I haven't really found a good place for this yet, but usually it hangs up there or on one of these shelves over here. That we have a water inlet and outlet. So the white cap there is the inlet that fills the tank, and I'll show you guys how all that works in a sec, but we'll get to the cool part first. Cool, we got that. Now we reach up here, and this is by no means a final setup. It's kind of loose, just a wire hanging there, but it works for now. We turn that on and then listen. So you hear that pump going? That is a 12 volt electric pump that gives us uh, water pressure. So I use this, this nozzle I use for bike washes. There's another nozzle that screws on. This is just like a, an air gun, which works really well because it has the interchangeable nozzles. So if I put like the fan blade on, I use that to take showers. This is kind of more like the pressure washer one for uh, washing bikes. I'm not gonna spray that right now, but yeah, really cool. Works great. So under here, I machined up this whole bracket here. All the main lines go into there. Uh, we follow it down around there. We've got hoses that connect all the way under here. Uh, I guess I'm gonna get dirty today. So here is where all the magic happens. This right here, right next to the drive shaft, it's kind of really tight in there. Sorry, right next to the gas tank um, is an 18 gallon uh, water tank. You can't really see it very well. You can see part of the actual plastic right there. But fill that guy up. And then we've got our pump. I guess my face will be in it right there, right next to the tank. Uh, so here, this is the cool part. So this is like a pressurized chamber. So there's like a, there's like a rubber diaphragm in there. You charge one side, the, the side over there with air pressure. So I, I can't remember what PSI you set it to, but basically, once you start, you turn that pump on, that 12 volt pump, it pumps water against that diaphragm, builds pressure, and then once it reaches a certain pressure, the pump cuts off. So what that means is essentially you have water stored that's pressurized that you can use even when the pump's off. So right now the pump's off, um, but we have pr pressurized water or air, however you want to think of it, I suppose both in that tank right now. So. Pretty simple, we have a line that goes from the main tank into this tank, and then it feeds out through that T-junction there. Feeds all the way to the back of the vehicle. And then we go here, and it comes right out that uh, little junction right there that I made. So the pump is off right now, there's no electricity going to it. And as you can see, we still have uh, still have water pressure here. So I ordered the van with a dual battery setup. So there's two 75 amp hour batteries right underneath the driver's seat. You can't really see it, but let me move the seat forward. So we have a third battery, which is 150 amp hours. It's a marine deep cycle battery. There's an automatic cutoff switch here. So once those get to around 12 volts, they stop draining when the vehicle's turned off. So then it leaves it up to this third battery to keep powering the fridge, um, the inverter up there, whatever else I have running. Um, so that's really cool. Even if you ran that battery completely dead and nothing worked, your inverter, your fridge died, you know that you'd still be able to start the car because those are gonna have both around 12 volts. It's not the best for long-term camping because uh, let's say on like a 70 degree day, the most I'd get is maybe three full days of running the fridge continuously. So uh, in order to charge the system back up, you have to run the car and it can take like a couple hours to bring the system back up to, I think it op I think it maxes out at around like 12.8 12 12 volts typically. So I have this little readout on my switch box. Yeah, so right now we're at 12.3 volts. I have this taped up because sleeping, that blue light is really annoying, but um, the fridge runs pretty well. I mean, it's a pretty efficient fridge and um, I don't have too many issues. Usually I'm only camping for one or two days, so I don't see it as too much of a problem, but I do intend to get solar power set up here eventually. So you, the thing will be completely self-sustaining other than the water, of course, but in terms of electricity, 
there won't be any issues there. But one really, really cool item I have is this Energy Kodiak solar uh, generator or storage unit. This thing is an absolute lifesaver. So um, pretty much it's a battery, but it has a built-in uh, power inverter and everything. So we turn this button on here and look at that. So we've got two cigarette lighters, four USB ports, uh, six 120 volt outlets, and then I guess that's a, yeah, another uh, 30 amp. Okay, so a higher amperage uh, outlet there, but you can plug in your laptop. So I've ran, I ran my fridge in there in 90 degree heat for, I believe it was 14 hours, and the thing was still going. It didn't die yet, but it was, it was down to uh, one or two of the reds there. So it definitely had more to squeeze out of it but this thing is absolutely awesome. If you're you're camping, you you want to be by a fire and like working on you know photos or video from the day, you take that, you park it next to you. You don't have to have an extension cord or any garbage like that. One other thing that's really cool, and I'll do this in a future project, is it's ready to go for a direct solar panel hookup right here. So uh, I'm not sure what the connector is called exactly, uh, but I can wire these. Uh, that's just your positive and negative there. I can wire those into my current system get a solar panel up on top hook that solar panel up to here and it's pretty much plug and play ready to go so uh, i can charge my whole system off of solar through this guy it has the inverter built in it has all these incredible outlets here uh, i really just have to find a good place to mount it and then get the cojones to uh <laughs> buy a, a solar panel but for now you can just charge it uh, off of like a 120 outlet in your home and then you're, I mean, depending on how much you use it, you could get up to a, a week's worth of camping out of it for sure if you're uh, just charging laptops and phones and uh, maybe a few other items here and there. So this thing's really, really great. Definitely go check it out. I'll post links in the description of this video on how and where to get it. I also have a discount code for you guys. So you can plug that in and uh, receive some money off ordering one of these things and I promise you will not regret it. They are priceless. Now I wanna show you guys how I load bikes and how incredibly awesome and easy that is. This out of the way, uh, I keep my ramp here. Uh, no judgments on the wooden ramp. I've used an aluminum ramp and they are incredibly noisy and really, really obnoxious, not to mention expensive and people like to steal them. No one's gonna steal a piece of wood. I do have a little attachment there, which I made that makes things easier. So we back it up right there, turn the handlebars full lock to the right, take this little cushion here, we place that there for a little bumper for the handguard. So we have this right here as a wheel chalk, it goes up against the bed frame. This bar here prevents it from uh, hopping sideways. But up in the front, we want to make sure that this wheel is touching uh, the wall here. So if it's not right when you load it in, just give it a little, give it a little nudge over. Here's the really cool part. Right now, as you can see, it's standing up by itself, no kickstand or nothing. We take one of these soft loops, hook it around the handlebar. So we reach down here, we have a strap that's already cut short to length, so there's not all this stuff dangling, already attached over there. We just hook that on, and then we give it a nice one pull. And then look at that. That's really great. It still allows this twin size bed to be folded up without moving the bike, without interfering with anything. So it works really well for me. Of course, not everyone is gonna be able to push their bike in like that, but if you are able to, trust me, this is a great system. Strap it to the wall. I have uh, steel reinforcements here that the handlebar is actually going up against. I installed all those myself. Down here, we have this uh, angled aluminum that's, um, that's bolted to the wall down the whole length of the van, so it's very, very rigid and strong. And that has holes every uh, six inches, which you can put the hooks through, as you can see there. I have the same thing on this side behind the bed. Uh, I don't use straps there anymore too often. I did a lot before I had the, uh, the bed in here. Like this whole box here is just strapped down. So if I wanna move that out and I need room for three bikes, which you can very easily fit, you have one on the wall there, another one to the other wall, one in the center, very easy to load. Uh, I just unstrap that, lift the box out, and it's just a bare open cargo area again. So that feature is very nice. In fact, 
all of the shelves, all of the ceiling paneling, everything besides insulation is bolt on, bolt off. But we got one bike in and it's fun to go riding with a buddy. So of course you gotta have two bikes and that has to be easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and load bike number two and show you guys how that works. So as long as you can squeeze your body whew, past the bike on the wall, it's super, super easy. Take this strap here. So get that strapped up. Give it a nice little pull. So I ended up putting that rear strap on. Give that one more good little snug and we got two bikes very very secure in there show you how that looks from the back plenty of room so take our ramp slide it up like this right in between the bikes right there close up the door close up this guy drop our pin in of course the hose would be packed away close the door and we're ready to roll so all in all two bikes probably three minutes total with messing around with the middle bike and the straps but very very easy very efficient and we got tons of space still by the way another little convenience factor have trash bags ready to go <laughs> hung up on the walls i just use a little magnet the only other thing I can think of is uh, what I do for cooking. So I just have this little tiny single burner Coleman grill, uh, runs off of butane cans, the little, however size they are, the little Gatorade bottle size cans. And I don't do too much crazy with cooking. I'll cook eggs or chicken, usually uh, heat up some brats and then, you know, make a little, little hot dog with some melted cheese on it. But uh, it works really well. It's simple, it's cheap, it was about $15 for the can of butane and the burner itself at Walmart. So I use that for now. I've got all my utensils. Um, but mostly I try and pack like dry foods or, you know, lunch meats, cheese, stuff to make sandwiches, um, things, things of that, things of that nature. But, uh, yeah, so that is my 2017 transit 250 build moto camper build. And I absolutely love the thing. I got it about two and a half years ago, and I have 67,000 miles on it now, I believe. It handles great. The power on the engine is absolutely fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I do have a build series video on that really pretty 2003 Yamaha 250 in there. Uh, the other blue one, obviously that's the one I ride the most and is beat up. But uh, go check out my restoration video of that uh, 2003 YZ250. It's really cool. I have a whole series of building out this van, which I'll link in the description as well if you want to see the dirty details and how everything uh, was put together. Thanks for stopping by and hope you enjoyed it.